Hey guys, welcome to episode 7 now of War Stories. Today, again, a little bit of a different episode. Uh, we're passing through Houston, and how could we not stop by and visit Sam Houston? Uh, Sam Houston was a pretty amazing person for the state of Texas, and he did a lot for our country in the early beginnings. He was born in Virginia, and uh, he grew up as a young man, and then he kind of ran away from home, and he went to live with the Cherokee Indians. Now, and he stayed with the Indians for about three years, and he learned all of their language, all of their customs, even being accepted into the tribe at one point as Raven. Right. Uh, they gave him an Indian name. So, you know, Sam was a very impressive guy. When you're coming into Huntsville, Texas, which is where his museum and his gravesite is, and uh, this is the first stop along the journey when you're um, checking out Sam Houston. Coming into Huntsville, Texas, on the right, there is a statue of Sam Houston. And I think the thing is like 30 feet tall, for real. So we're going to make our way around to the statue, take a picture of the statue uh, while we're talking about Sam Houston, and then we're going to move on to the museum and gravesite. All right. It's pretty out here. Houston is really busy. I'm guessing these trails are cut through to the statue because it's right here on the grass down the road. I guess this will be the safest way to get to the statue, right? Yeah. We're just taking a back trail back here around the museum to get to the statue. I waved at that worker. I hope that I wonder if she knows that people come out through here looking for the statue. All right. I'm looking for our statue. Just one second. I'm trying to see where our statue is. Hold on. Down here? Where do you see on my back? I'm just gonna give a shit to you. Ow! Sorry, Grace. Going down, you can see the statue right there. Coming up. Here is the Sam Houston statue that everybody was talking about when you come around to it. Look how big this thing is, guys. Look at this. They try to get out of the sun glare a little bit so you can see this better. Let's get behind him so you can see. Look at this. That's the Sam Houston statue. That is humongous. And it's right out here on the interstate, so it is kind of loud. But this is the Sam Houston statue, guys. Look how big that is. That is massive. That is a very big statue. Wow. Go back this way. Yeah, I say we take the trail this time. Is that a trail? Yes. We're at the grave of Sam Houston. And I want y'all to remember in 59, he was elected governor of Texas. In 61, when Texas decided to join the Confederacy, he resigned. And in 1863 is when he passed away in pneumonia. This is where, he is, where his gravesite is and his monument is. And it is about, what, two minutes from the museum area. Okay, let's go take a walk and see it. And here, right here, it says the world will take care of Houston's fame. See that? This is the monument. Let's go in here and see it. 
And here we have another one, a uh, dedication to Sam Houston. Texas loves Sam Houston, guys. Yeah, they do. And they got his stuff right up front so you can see it. Okay, and this would be, let me walk around and see if I can see this. Okay, buried here is Thomas and, and Mary Carruthers. He was the first covet cousin of General Sam Houston. And that's the ones buried here beside them. Mrs. Margaret Moffat Lee Houston, that was his wife. And we, we talked about her. Okay. She was born near Marion, Alabama on April 11th, 1819, following their marriage in Alabama on May 9th, 1840, Margaret and Sam became the parents of eight children, all of whom lived to adulthood. As several months after her husband's death, Margaret Houston moved to Independence in Washington County, Texas, in order to educate her children at Baylor University. And then, let's see, uh, she was 48 when she died of yellow fever on December 3rd, 1867. And this would be him and her buried here. It says on his epitaph, it says, Soldier under Jackson, boy hero of horse you been. We talked about that. Congressman from Tennessee, governor of Tennessee, chief of the Cherokees, commander in chief of the Texan army, hero of San Jacinto, yeah, Jacinto twice president of the Republic of Texas, and U.S. Senator from Texas and governor from Texas. He died July the 26th, 1863. This is the cemetery where he was at, where he's at and where they're buried. It's a beautiful little cemetery, guys. If you're ever up here and you want to walk through here and see this, it would be a nice little walk and film. It's quiet here. It's a lot quieter than Houston. Very much so. <laughs> His namesake city is a lot louder than he is. He's got a nice, quiet resting place. We're at the Sam Houston Museum and Wilderness Trail. There's a bunch of buildings and history here, all dealing with Sam Houston. We're going to take a walk through, cover some of the buildings, and talk about Sam Houston and his life. Right. And there was a little bit that happened um, between Texas and then from whenever he left the Cherokees, as we said. So he left the Cherokees three years into it. Went back home, kind of got a little bit into politics, joined the military, mm -hmm. and that's where, if you watch uh, the video, and I'll put the link below to the war of, uh, uh, the Red Creek War, 1813-1814, that's where Sam Houston made his major debut in, in as far as becoming an American hero. Uh, one of the things that Sam Houston did, as we noted, he was the first one over the wall fighting the Creek Indians. Mm -hmm. And he used his experiences living with the Cherokee to help him in the invasion and take over the Creek. Right. Now, so he goes back to... Uh, he runs away when he was a teenager. Uh, when his mother and father both passed away, uh, he ran away, to, I mean, he ran away to, to live with the Cherokee. He served three years living with the Cherokee. Right? Then he went back uh, to Tennessee and they had named him, Cher remember when he lived three years with the Cherokee, then they nicknamed him Raven and he came back home toward Tennessee. He served under Andrew Jackson in the War of 1812. And we've talked about the Creek and Indian Wars before and he, he covered that already where we were talking about Horseshoe Ben. After that, he was elected governor of Tennessee and he presided over the removal of the Cherokee from Tennessee. So I, I had a question in my mind, and I'm sure y'all, you guys are thinking the same thing. Why would he run away and live with them for three years, then come back and betray them by being the one that leads them leaving Tennessee? Was I mean, did he want to do that because he could keep them safer than the military would because he's taking care of them? Or did he just betray the people who took him in for three years? Well, it was a little bit of both. Uh, you know, I'm not saying anything negative on Sam Houston, but he was a very self-serving individual. Mm -hmm. um, now, about this time, 
Andrew Jackson was getting a new party started, the Democratic Party. It had never existed until this time. So, as Andrew Jackson is getting this new Democratic Party started, Sam Houston joins the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, Sam, o uh, Sam Houston claimed ownership of individuals. And, you know, that was something that he wasn't willing to just give up real quick. Right, right. Now, the Democratic Party was having some changes in, in as it was forming, but the Democratic Party at that time would have been closer to, let's just say, the Kennedy Democrats of the 60s even. Right, right. Um, you know, the, the uh, parties always change. The Republican Party has changed and gotten a whole lot more conservative than it used to be uh, back in those days. But really, there was only one main difference between the two parties at that time, and it was the state's rights mm -hmm. issues. Well, he was doing that. And then in 1829, he ended up getting a divorce, and he also uh, resigned as governor the same year. Then he moved back to the Arkansas Territory and settled in Texas in 1832. And this is right here. This is like a little stage that they built. I don't know what this is. I don't know. I think it's uh, just a little building. Um, they have some little buildings that are relevant to the area. Okay, so we so we have them moved to the Arkansas Territory, and then he moved to Texas in 1832. Okay. Right, and what was impressive too is before he came to Texas, he was the a governor in Tennessee. Right. right. And when he came to Texas. Texas was still a territory at that time, so he was a president, so to say, of Texas. Right. He was the first, and I think it was the third? third? The, the sixth. Sixth, okay. Yeah. So he served two terms because they had term limits. How about that? Even in those days, they knew term limits were important. Oh, that's the house. That's what we're going to go up there and look at. Yeah, that is the house. I love how they do the, the balconies. And he also, after the Battle of Gonzales, he helped organize the Texas Provisional Government, and he was a top-ranking official in the Texas Army. He led the Texas Army to victory at the Battle of San Jacinto, too. And it was 1836 when he won that Texas presidential election. I see why they call it a steamboat house. Right, because it's, it's built shape. like a steamboat. That's really cool. Look at that. That is neat. You have to go up here and look. Let's read some of the history on this right quick. Originally known as Buena Vista, the name Steamboat House has prevailed over time because of its resemblance to a riverboat, which we can see. The sad farewell was a painting right here. You see the, the um, shortly before he died, the Alabama Cosheta tribe came to visit one last time as soon as Sam sold with familiar travel songs right here on the porch. Wow, that, now that and would that, be... Those steps while he was upstairs dying. That would be awesome. Right? right? <laughs> uh, he never owned this house. He rented it from 1862 to 1863. And Margaret, he used to move to Independence, Texas after Sam's death. So this is where he passed away, guys. Can you imagine an Indian tribe from Alabama loving you and respecting you so much when they hear you're passing away that they come and sing songs to you on your porch? <laughs> come on now. Let's go up here and look. Oh, wow. That's the Steamboat House, guys. Look at this. I'm going to go up there and get a picture of that plaque. Make sure you get a picture of me up here. Whoa. This is where his coffin is and the viewing room. You can see in there. 
See that, guys? That's his coffin and the viewing room. There's chairs and a coffin laid out in there for the viewing room. We're going to walk around the side onto the porch. I'm standing where the Alabama Cohadna native stood, singing their travel songs to Sam Houston as he lay dying in this house. Go around here and look at this. That's amazing, you know what? It really is. It when Alabamans love somebody, they do, don't they? Oh, look, okay. Here we have a bed and piano. You can go around to this window on the other side and see in there too. Oh, look at there, guys. That's a good view. See the bedroom and the musket? Let's go around this side. They have these little windows set up where you can look straight through and see everything. Isn't this beautiful? What a place to go, right? Imagine how quiet and nice this was at one time. Look in here. There you go, guys. That's more, looks like that's where he was laying. See that? This room. Wow, it just gives you a feeling, doesn't it? Of how sad and somber this was. Losing someone like him. Here's another room right here. Look at that, guys. See the chairs in the bed? Let me go down here to the end. And here we have a dining room set up. It even has food on the table. beautiful out here. This is a nice little house with a cool little story to it. I like that. Didn't you? I did. I thought it was a pretty house. We'll go back to talking about him and while he was, uh, he had just got the presidential nomination from Texas, right? Right. That's what we're up to. And I can't remember if he was still on the Democratic ticket at that time. Uh, let me see. Hold on. <sighs> yes, it was a Democratic ticket at that time. 1836, he won the pre Texas presidential election. And then in 1838, he left for because of the term limits, things we were talking about. And then in 1841, he got reelected. And he played the role in annexation of Texas. And then in 1845 and 46, he represented Texas in the Senate. He joined the Democratic Party, supported Polk's prosecution of the Mexican-American War. He voted for the Compromise of 1850. And then he voted against the Kansas-Nebraska Act. And I'm going to tell you why. He joined the American Party. They were making Kansas and Nebraska um, official territories of the U.S., and on doing so, they were also going to be outlawed on uh, slavery. Sam Houston didn't have a problem with that issue. In this time, in this decade, in America, and the way it was being formed and Texas was being established, in the South, that was a common practice. There was only a few states that actually outlawed the ability to own an individual. Mm -hmm. 1859, he was elected governor of Texas. Just make sure we remember, we're in that era right now. He's in 1859, he's elected governor of Texas. Then he tries to get the presidential nomination again under the Constitutional Party in 1860, and he loses, okay? He fought for the secession of Texas, and um, he fought against the secession of Texas and was forced out in 1861, okay? Because he didn't want Texas to secede from the Union states rights he was more in the line that um and this is where he was right if the federal government was to get involved it would federalize the union in other words there would be a central government that told all the states here's your general law and states would have very little ability to create their own laws when he voted against the kansas nebraska act he resigned out of the democratic party yes and yes. then he was trying to get nominations under the American Party and the Constitutional Party, but he never did win the 
the presidential race. You know, he never did win the ticket to get to to be president. And, and those and two then, parties, neither one of those parties went anywhere. And then when Texas anywhere. succeeded and went and joined the Confederacy, because he, he did not want to join the Confederacy. And so when Texas voted against him and said, we're joining the Confederacy, we're going to help on the side of the South, he left office. So we're, right now we're going to go back because his hands were, like we said, he was a politician, he was a lawmaker, he was a soldier. He's really ingenious, and he knew like 50 languages probably by the time it was done. So let's go over here and look at some more of his places. Well, you know, and learning some of the native languages would be very difficult because there's no root to go off of. If you speak Spanish, it is not that difficult to learn how to speak Italian and French because they all have a Latin base. And true, and if you were immersed in it, like he was, he was living with them, it would be totally, it'd be a lot easier to learn the language. When you're living with them, it'd be easy to learn it. Okay, here was his garden. Would you see this? Oh, that's beautiful. Or at least a garden. This was his garden. Garden spot here. That's a pretty. Pretty garden. Yes. This guy's. Yeah, I wouldn't want people stamping all over my cabbages and stuff either. I like that gate. Look at that. Somebody's out here planting. Good job, guys. All right, so now here we go. We got the house. All right, this was Eliza's house. Just for her. <laughs> you know how people have a she shed? Yeah, the she house. Right? Look at this. Amazing, right? Yeah, I like that. It's pretty cool. Let's go over here and look, guys. See what this is. Go here and look. We got, looks like a private little cubby uh, dining room, like just right here off the kitchen where you sit and have tea or something. I'm trying to get in there and get a picture. I don't know how that's going to work. Let me see if he's anything on that. This okay. is Woodland, his house. The house. Yeah. Go ahead. <coughs> but one of the things we kind of blazed past is there were several major battles here. Like uh, mm -hmm. the, the one that comes to mind the most was, I think it was his first, was the Battle of Gonzales. Yes. And Sam Houston really proved himself being a military leader by strategically organizing his team and forcing Mexico out of Texas mm -hmm. and claiming Texas for the United States as a United States territory. Um. So that, that's really where his big thing came. I mean, he came a far, a long ways from, from Virginia. Uh -huh. Well, the Battle of uh, Jacinto, is, I think Jacinto is how they pronounce it, the one over here in Houston, on the outside of Houston, was a final decisive battle between him and Santa Ana. It was the final battle between him and Santa Ana where Texas won their independence from Mexico. And my thing is, is, you know, Santa Ana, I mean, I don't care what you say, I think he was a very brilliant military leader himself. And for him to have to go home and say, okay, guys, we, we, we done lost it. I mean, they lost ooh. Texas, but they still left a lot of their rules and laws because Sam Houston had to become Catholic just so he could uh, buy property in, in the state of Texas, in this annexation right here. I mean, he had to be Catholic just to buy property. Religious freedom did not expand to Texas yet. If you remember from our last episode, we were in Utah, and it was... It's the same time period. Yes, it so is. So all of this is happening at the same time. You got the Mormons out there fighting for their freedom. You got Sam Houston down here fighting for the freedom of Texans. We have all these folks in Texas right now fighting for their, their freedom and their rights. It's, yes. it's, it's amazing how history just keeps going over. Jennifer's going to go up there. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. This looks big. I want this now. Oh, got an upstairs bedroom. Hey, look at that. That's what I'm talking about. I done found my new bedroom. The Houston Children. These are the kids' bedrooms, and I've got a list of the kids right here. Wow, people. And this was their bedroom and playroom. I see that. Cribs, toys. 
beautiful up here. Alrighty then. I'm gonna walk through. I could tell this is made for children. Yeah, we, we love bringing the, this history to you guys. You know, again, if, if you would just kind of comment below. Here we got a sitting room oh, with a you know, that's piano. I, I, I love um, sitting room. Yes. Yes. I kind of miss it. You know, you really haven't seen like formal sitting rooms in years. And here's another bedroom over here. You see that with the bedroom that goes off the side that we were looking at just a minute ago? Oh, look, look at the silhouette over the fireplace. Yes. Those old those old silhouette paintings were very popular. Yes, and beautiful. As a matter of fact, Avon kind of had a brooch that they had a silhouette woman. I can't remember what it's called, but. Uh... Wow, this is nice. That house is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And when he when he fought Santa Ana and he won the independence for Texas, that really spurred him on as far as his political endeavors when that happened when he he was the one that had the decisive victory over santa Ana. of course that's gonna that's gonna spur your political career that's gonna spur your right. influence that's gonna do a lot of things but then he took it a haul back when he when he was fighting against them joining the confederacy so it's like you know it went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth here was his law office he was a master mason. Look at that. He was in the masons. He was a mason. Makes sense to me. A lot of the founding members were too. Let's see what's in here. This was his law office. Wow. Okay. So what we can do here? There we go. What a good picture. Scan his law office there. Yeah. So this was his law office, where he sat and thought about. A lot of what he learned, he did himself. He read a lot of books. And he did a lot of work just working on the on site, like on the job training. That's how you learn a lot. And that's yeah. how he learned a lot. But, but just think, you know, three years living with a, a, a group of, you know, the Cherokee. And yeah, you're going to pick up all kind of politics. Then, remember, he, he left again. Right? Remember, this is why, you know, during the middle of all of this, when he, he was kicked out because of Texas not, you know, Texas joining the Confederacy, he didn't want to have any part to do with it, right? And they, they made him resign. He went and lived with the Cherokee again, married a Cherokee chief's daughter, right? Had eight children by this woman. And then he come back here, he met another woman, right? And he married her and they had eight children together here and this was their their place but you got to remember before her there were two other marriages and approximately 10 children that he didn't even have anything to do with that are still running around out there that his they are his lineage and then you have this one these are the established ones then his wife after 15 years finally got him to be baptized into the baptist faith This was Eliza's kitchen. Eliza traveled to Texas with Margaret upon marriage to Sam Houston. She cared for the Houston family her entire life and referred to as Aunt Eliza. See, she was part of the family. She didn't have to go. She just went. All right. She remained with the family well after the death of Margaret and Sam to help raise the grandchildren. Look at the star. I was. I noticed the star. Look at this. She cared for the family and the grandchildren. There's nothing wrong with that for having care for other people. Well, let's walk this way. <clears throat> the whole family was respected and loved. Okay, here we go. The Garrett cabin is a double pin 1840s cabin owned by Daniel Boone. The Robert Ferris cabin was a single pin cabin built by Alan Ferris in the early 1840s. And he's on the land awarded that. Remember, I was telling you about the battle that Sam Houston won against Santa Ana. Right. That was him. He's on the battlefield. That was his cabin. And the Bear Bend cabin, the double pin, 1840s cabin, owned by the Chatham family in Montgomery County, was used by Sam Houston and his friends while hunting black bears near present day Lake Conroe. So, yeah, and I don't know if, if, if 
all of these folks are paying tribute to Alabama, but I do appreciate it. We're I getting mean, a lot of tribute. Montgomery, Huntsville. I mean, all of these Lee, you know, there's a whole bunch of names that are big names in Alabama uh, as far as cities and towns go. Right. Let's go down here and see this. So I, these were war veterans he had come back and they could stay here and build their own cabin on the land. And, you know, Daniel Boone was the, the first name mentioned on there. And right. if you remember, Daniel Boone was involved in the Creek War in 1813 and 14. Yes, he was. Remember? So it's... it's he just, helped with the Battle of Tallahatchie. Remember? He came in on the Battle of Tallahatchie. Yes. All right. Let's go see the cabin then. Here we go. We got a window right here. Let's go in here and see. We got a bedroom. Look at that, guys. A little crib. Oh, I like these beams. I'm gonna have to go up there. Let's go see what's in here. Let's see what's in here, guys. Looks like a bedroom. Oh, I don't see much of nothing up That's there. It's a dining room. Hmm? I didn't see much of nothing up top. I know, I still just wanna go up there. Cause there's stairs. Oh, I didn't notice the stairs. This is the Bear Bend Hunting Lodge. All right. This is the Hunting Lodge. There's some bedrooms up here. There we go. I look like I'm made for this. It's just a bedroom and a loft. You know what? Yes. Look, I could, I could swing off these rafters. Oh. So this is the Bear Hunting Lodge. Wow. See how this fireplace is built straight up? And then you have double windows on that upstairs room. See that? See? That one looks like it's uh, the foundation is falling in. They have it roped off, so we, we can't go over there. So I'm just going to do that on that, okay? And we'll hit this cabin up here. You see how the foundation is falling on that side? Yeah, I do. I can't go into that one, guys. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place to come and walk around and see these sites and these old cabins. And learn some history at the same time. It really is. And I know normally we single out a a battle or an event uh, that has multiple people but you know when you're in Houston you, you can't stop and uh, pay homage to the man that made Texas what it is exactly Stan Houston there's a goes the kitty cat this is the Robert Ferris log cabin right I see a kitty cat. Thank you guys for coming on out here, joining us today at the Sam Houston Museum Memorial here in Huntsville, Texas. And uh, until the next drop, talk at you.